What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com, back with another SketchUp Profile Builder tutorial for you. So um, in this video I wanted to talk a little bit about the new hole cutting tool that's been included in the Profile Builder 3 release. So if you're interested in checking out Profile Builder, uh, there's a free trial that you can check out at the SketchUpEssentials.com slash Profile Builder. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so the hole tool is fairly easy to use um, and it works both on profiles created within Profile Builder as well as on regular objects within SketchUp. There's a few limitations we'll talk about in a minute. But let's say for example that I was just to come in here and I was just to extrude up a simple wall. So I was just to push pull this up and then I was to group this. And that's going to be important because this only seems to work on group geometry. I don't think that you can use it to cut holes in non-group geometry. So all you do is you just group your geometry, so select it, make a group, and then you can just come in here and you can activate the hole tool, which is right here. And you're just gonna click on that and you're gonna select the kind of hole that you wanna create. So in this case, let's say that I wanted to create a circular hole with a diameter of 24 inches. All I would do is I would come in here and I would set those two things, and then I would click on the plus button to add holes to an object. And you can see how this is going to let me come in here and that's going to let me cut a hole into this face. And so it doesn't really matter the thickness of your object either. So if I was to make a big thick object like this and put this into a group, this would still cut the hole into the object all the way through. So you can see how depth isn't really an issue. It goes full depth on whatever the hole that you're creating is, as long as you've selected this box for full depth. And you can also come in here and create non-full depth holes, which we'll come in and we'll talk about a little bit later. In addition, I was also able to come in here and create holes in curved faces. So if I was to draw like a curved face, like this one, and put it in a group, I could come in here and I could cut holes in that face as well. And I will note that it seemed to get a little bit tricky um, trying to get it to inference to the faces properly. So in this case, for example, if I was to create a rectangular hole, let's say I wanted to create a door opening and I was to set the inference point or the, if I was to set the placement point in like the bottom right hand corner, you can see how getting this to sit flush on your face can get a little bit challenging. You kind of have to move your mouse around a little bit. So you might have a little bit of an issue creating these straight across. You can see how this more angled this across. But you can cut those holes into objects like this one. So I was also able to use this to cut holes in a sphere. So if I was to use the follow me tool to create a sphere right here, then I was to triple click and I was to make that a group, I'd be able to come in here and create a rectangular tool rectangular hole into this sphere. But you can see how again, I had the same problem where getting it to sit flat on this face is a little bit challenging. So you can definitely use that for curved objects, but it can get a little bit tricky. And so one thing to note on this is this is only gonna create the hole in the object that you have selected. So let's say for example that I wanted to cut a hole in this face, but I didn't have it selected. Instead I selected this face. I could come in here and I could set up my hole by clicking on rectangular hole and setting the size. And then I could click the plus button, but you can see how this won't cut a hole in this object because this isn't the object that's selected. This one here is. So this will only cut a hole in the object that you have selected. So I can click over here all day long, but if I don't have this object selected, nothing's gonna get cut. And another thing to note is this will also cut holes on like your vertical faces as well. So let's say for example, I was to select this object and then come in here and cut a hole in the vertical face. You can see how that cut all the way through from the top. So this is just kind of inferencing to your different faces. So built in, you have the option to create a circular hole, a rectangular hole, so you could use that to create like doors or windows or something like that. And you also have the option to come in here and create a custom hole. And what a custom hole is gonna do is that's gonna allow you to draw a profile and it's actually gonna use Profile Builder's functionality in order to do this. So let's say for example that I wanted to create a hole where I've got a couple spheres that kind of overlap on each other. So kind of like this, all you would do is you would draw the profile that you wanna to use to cut the hole so in this case, I've created this face right here. You would click on this button and you would just do a plus to add a new profile and click OK. And then click OK down here. 
Well now, we've created that as a profile and we can use that to cut holes in our object. So, and another thing to note is not only can you use custom profiles that you've just created, you can also go into the profile dialog and you can select profiles that are in your library. So let's say for example, I wanted to use this uh, steel eye beam profile. You can see how I could actually select that using the profile dialog and this would cut a hole using that steel eye beam. So you can use profiles as cutters as well. So this tool works both on regular objects and also on profiles and assemblies that you've created in Profile Builder. So let's say for example I was to go into my library and I was to open up this wall construction assembly that I've created for a previous video. Then I was to come in here and create this wall. You can see how this wall gets brought in here with uh, your studs and also a couple layers of sheathing and all of that different stuff. Well this hole cutter will allow you to cut a hole. So let's say I wanted to make like a three foot by eight foot door, this would allow you to cut a hole in here inside this assembly. So you can see I can cut a hole right here. And one thing this won't do is this won't reconfigure your framing if you've created a wall like that. So if you're looking for accurate framing, you are still gonna have to go in and do some remodeling. But what this does allow you to do is this allows you to cut those holes really easily and then you could bring like a dynamic component or something like that into this opening to create your doors. So you can remove holes, but only in profiles um, that have been created using Profile Builder. So like let's say for example I was to create a jersey barrier object and then I was to cut a couple holes in that using like the circle. Because those are being created in a profile member, I can come in here and I can remove those holes. So that only works with profile members that have been created using Profile Builder. Um, but that is an option for that. If you were to come in here and even within the assemblies, that doesn't really work. I can't come in here and remove that because it only works in the profile member. But it is in there as an option. And so the last thing I want to talk about is this also allows you to set this so it's not full depth. So let's say for example that I was to come in here and I was to use the cavity wall assembly. So this cavity wall assembly is one foot two inches deep and then my brick on the face is only three and five eighths inches. Well, let's say we only wanted to cut an opening in that front piece in the brick. What we would do is we would just come in here and instead of checking the box for full depth, we would do three and five eighths inches. Then we would select our object and click on the whole tool and we'd come in here and we'd set this. And you can see how what that does is that only creates a partial depth hole instead of a full depth hole. So if we were to do this a little thicker, so let's say we were to do this four inches and then select our object and click on this, this would probably allow us to see through and see like the insulation and all that other stuff inside this object. Not quite. We'll go in and set this to six inches and this will let us see the insulation through the brick. So hopefully this gave you a pretty good idea of the way the whole tool works in Profile Builder. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Is this an extension you're interested in? I just love having that sketch up conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new sketch up content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.